Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to the RPG Greenfoot tutorial series. So today, we're going to start part 2 and build a bullet that the player can actually shoot. So what we're going to do is this bullet here is going to follow the mouse and basically wherever you click, that's where the mouse will go. So, let's go ahead and review what we had last time. Last time we just built a simple little character, he moves around and he changes direction. He looks up when he's moving up, down when he's moving down and everything. And right now he looks pretty cool, so let's go ahead and add in the bullet. So for the bullet, we're going to need to add in another class. And I'll just call it bullet. So for this image, for the bullet, I haven't really picked anything special from the internet. I'm just going to use some random object from Greenfoot. So, not in here, I just thought this one would be good. It looks sort of like a bullet, just we might as well use it. But remember, you can replace anything with the bullet image. So let's go ahead and compile, and we can see here that it looks like this. But, just notice when you run, nothing is going to happen, because of course we haven't put any code yet. So, let's go ahead and start. First off, just as the player, the split is going to move too. So we're going to want to create a speed for the bullet too. So let's go ahead and put it right there. Not here. So this variable speed will just make it easier for us so that whenever we do something we don't have to type in the number three every single time we can just use the variable so if you want to change something you can just change the speed so let's go ahead and make this faster than the player because we don't want the bullet to be the same speed as the player i'll make it four for now and let's go ahead and think about what we want to do here we want to basically make it so that whenever the player clicks the on the screen, a bullet will spawn right on the player and it'll start going in the direction of the mouse. So how can we do this? Well, the easiest way is to have the, uh, the bullet rotate towards the mouse so it's pointing right at it and then just start moving at its speed. So first off, let's go ahead and make this move the speed amount as soon as it is created so after it's created it'll start moving directly and we'll have a bullet so you might be thinking that we'll create the bullet in the bullet class but that is actually wrong bullets can only be created by an object that's always going to be present on the screen now bullets can't it's not, an ide it's not ideal to have a bullet create more bullets because if you have the code for creating a bullet whenever you click inside of the bullet class, then what if there is no bullet present on the screen? For example, the first time you run the game, there aren't going to be any bullets yet because you haven't clicked yet. But then when you try to click, you'll think that it'll you'll want it to spawn, but since there is no bullet on the screen, it can't run its bullet creation code. That's why we're going to put the bullet creation code inside of the player. So I'll just go ahead and make a new function called shoot. So as usual, public void, because you're not returning anything, just doing something. Open up the brackets and now we'll shoot. So first off, we need to check if the mouse is clicked. And there's a really simple uh, function for that. Just go if, because it's an if statement, we're checking if it's been clicked. Then you say green foot dot, because this is a green foot function, and you say mouse clicked. I can see here that for this uh, green for dot mouse click you need to pass in an object now this is because usually I guess when you want to click something you would say oh 
it, did you click the button or did you click that bad guy over there and then do something but here we don't want to do that we just want to check if anything if this whole screen has been clicked so what object goes there well it's the world because this whole thing is the world right so if you want to check if the whole screen has been clicked you just check if the world has been clicked and luckily the world itself is an object too so we can just pass and get world here and we have passed in an object and it'll check if the screen is being clicked so if it was clicked now we have to do the next part we have to spawn the bullet on the player so for now let's just go ahead to make sure it's working to make sure that it's working instead of having the angles and stuff like that we'll just uh, spawn a bullet at the player and uh, make it move so let's go ahead and spawn an object and if you remember to add in another object object in greenfoot you have to do it from the world this only the world class can create objects so to access the function from within the world you just say get world dot and now you have your list of functions that the world can do and right over here add in the object this is what object you want to create which will be the bullet here you want to create here you put in the x position and the y position and we will be done but first off when you add an object here you can't just say bullet because that refers to the class you don't want to just uh, since a class is an object you can't pass in a class instead you have to pass in an object a bullet object so first we have to create a new bullet object so what type of object is going is it this going to be it's going to be an actor object so we can say actor and let's we'll just call it bullet with a lowercase bullet so we don't confuse it with the bullet class and set it equal to new bullet and that's how this part over here is how you create a new object and so why we have this actor over here is imagine how you create a new integer you say int asd equals 5 you name the type first and then the name and then what it's going to be same thing here you name the type first which is an actor then the name you're going to give it bullet and then the actual class which is bullet so in here let's pass in this object bullet now the x position we want it to spawn on the character so say get x of the player because we want it to be on the player and over here likewise we say get y now over here we don't have any angle so what's going to happen is it's just going to move as we have it here it's just going to move the speed amount every frame in the default angle which is just right see whenever I click there's going to be a bullet spawned and it's going to move to the right now let's go ahead and add in the angle part now this is actually surprisingly easy so we want it to move towards the mouse right well that's fairly simple because all we need to do here is get the coordinates of the mouse and then there's already an inbuilt function in greenfoot that has the that uh, says turn towards integer integer which is the x and y coordinates so all we need to do is plug into that function the x and y coordinates of the mouse so let's go ahead here and in the player class we need to get information about the mouse now in order to get information about the mouse you uh, all information of the mouse is stored in a class called mouse info so for this you just say mouse info because it's a new type of mouse info I'll just call it mouse that's my name for it and new mouse sorry not new mouse info but instead here instead of doing this there's actually a function that returns this so you'd say greenfoot dot get mouse info right here now basically this mouse is going to this variable mouse is going to have a bunch of properties about the mouse coordinate and things like that so now we can go ahead and start using this let's just compile it to make sure we have no silly mistakes yep and we're good no syntax errors there and so now we can go ahead and start off 
So we need to turn the object towards the mouse X value and the mouse Y value. So let's go ahead and say turn towards right here. Turn this actor to face towards a certain location. Let's put this in. What do we want for the X value? Well, we want the X value of the mouse. So we can say mouse dot get X. Then over here, you can say mouse dot get y. And of course, we're doing this to the bullet actor, so it's a bullet dot turn towards. And looks like we're all good to go. So let's go ahead and see how this runs. And wow, it's all working just fine. So it's as simple as that. Now we have bullets that you can shoot around and they're all pretty cool. But look how annoying this is. This is a really, really annoying part of Greenfoot. It limits this world so that whenever an object gets to the edge, it makes it stop. Basically, instead of doing this, we're going to have to delete the bullet as soon as it reaches the edge. So let's go ahead and add that in. So over here, we're going to make a new function called check walls because all we're really doing is just checking the walls and if there is a wall there then we'll go ahead and destroy our bullet so public void check walls forgot this part over here put in the brackets now the us in our code so we want to say if there is a wall present, then go ahead and destroy ourselves. So how are we going to check if there's a wall? Well, you probably are thinking of doing that thing where if the X position is less than zero, or if it's greater than the width, or the Y position less than zero, and all that stuff, but there's actually a much easier function that's already built into the actor class, which is, is at edge. This automatically checks and turns a Boolean if it's at the edge of the screen. So, if it is at the edge, go ahead and destroy ourselves. For this, as mentioned before, the way to destroy an object is and add an object is from the world class. So we have to get the world first by saying get world dot and to access its function, we put a dot there. Then we can get all of its functions. Now there's add object here. There should be remove object right here, remove an object from the world. And the, uh, the object we want to pass in is this object, right? So there's a really simple keyword for that, this. Yep, that's not some r random made up thing. It actually refers to the object that you're coding in. So since here we're coding with the bullet object, it will destroy the bullet object because that's what it is. And so the reason we can't just say something like, bullet or something like that is because if we did something like that then it would destroy all the bullets on the screen and we don't want that we will only want to destroy this running instance of the bullet just this one bullet not all of them so this will only destroy the current one it's talking about that is at the edge so now if we compile this and run it should delete and go right now, it's working fine. We have our own RPG little knight here and he can shoot. Simple as that. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Next time, we'll go ahead and be covering how to create terrain, how to create enemies, and how to create procedurally generated map. And finally, one of the most hardest things to do, well not hardest, but the coolest things to do is to make the map scrollable, meaning it's not just confined to this little box here. We'll make it so that you can move around to outside of the screen and you can access a huge, huge map. That's what we'll all be covered in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like below if you liked it. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions about this video or if you have suggestions for a t specific tutorial you want me to do, stuff like that. So. Go ahead, leave a comment, like this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.